Hello everyone, and thank you for listening to the SEO Basics Workshop. Before we get started, I wanted to go over the agenda. I'll first give an overview as to what SEO is and why it's important. Then I'll go into some key topics within SEO. So I'll talk about keyword research, link building, and then also making a plan for SEO and what kind of things we can be looking at to measure our progress. Before we get into the review, We'll have a quick activity where we're going to determine the number of backlinks we'll need in order to rank among some of the top sites on a search engine results page. So what is SEO? Well, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, and it refers to the practice of increasing not only the quantity, but also the quality of your website traffic through organic search engine results. Now, let's break this definition down a little. So notice how we talk about not just increasing the number of people visiting the site, but we also wanna pay attention to the quality of the traffic. And when we talk about quality traffic, what we really mean is that we want users that can turn into leads and then turn into conversions. So it's great to have a bunch of people visiting our site, but if those users aren't interested in the content we're putting out there, or if their intent of the search isn't really related to the content we have on our site, then the traffic isn't going to be as useful as it could be. When I mention organic results or organic traffic, the main distinction I want to make here is that organic traffic is going to refer to non-paid traffic. So if someone comes to your site by clicking on a paid ad, then that's paid traffic, not organic. Organic traffic also excludes direct traffic. So this is when someone enters the URL of your site and gets to your site that way. And it also excludes referral and social traffic, which is traffic coming from other websites or social media sites. You can see an example of organic results when you Google a phrase, and a great example would be the featured snippet that Google puts on the top of the results page. And so a search engine is going to be what is going to go through all the content and determine your ranking on the search engine's result page. And the most popular search engine is Google, which is about 90% of all traffic, but there's also Bing, Yahoo, and some other ones. And so to briefly explain how search engines work, there's three stages, discovery, relevance, and authority. And these three stages correspond to three actions listed here. So crawling, indexing, and ranking. During the discovery stage, search engines will crawl the internet and discover different sites that are out there. In the relevance stage, search engines are going to index your site to determine how relevant the content on your site is to a particular search query. So this is where they're going to look out for keywords or phrases and titles to determine how relevant the content is. During the authority stage, search engines will rank your site based on how trustworthy your site is. And the way they determine your site's authority is mainly through the amount of backlinks you have, as that builds your site's credibility. All right, so why is SEO important? Well, the majority of online traffic is driven by search engines, so it's important that we are optimizing our website so we can be easily found by them. Another reason why we want to pay attention to organic traffic is because organic results appear more credible to users and therefore will receive more clicks than paid ads. The average click-through rate for a paid ad is around 2.8%. So we'll definitely see that organic traffic has a much higher click-through rate in comparison. And having a solid SEO plan is going to pay off in the long run. SEO can be a time-consuming process and you won't exactly see results immediately, but once you've invested the time into optimizing your site, you'll see an increase in organic traffic that can last months. So it's important to take the time to optimize our site so that search engines can easily discover our content and deliver it in an effective way. Now I want to go over the basic concepts in SEO. There's a lot that goes into it, but here are some broad topics. First is audience and user intent. So this relates to what our users are searching for and why they're searching for it. Next is content. And it's really important that we focus on the content on our websites to make sure that we are putting relevant content based on what our users are searching for and also authoritative content that our users can trust. And so these two topics kind of relate to keyword research. Keyword research is going to help us better identify our user's search intent and help us know what words or phrases to integrate into the content we put on our site so that users can find it. Another key concept in SEO is link building. So getting those external outbound links to our site so that we can in turn have inbound links or backlinks, which are going to help us increase our domain authority. Another part of SEO is analytics, reporting, and planning. 
So if we're going to start practicing SEO, then we want to know how we can measure our progress, understand our data, and figure out what actions need to be taken in order to achieve our website goals. All right, so let's move on to keyword research. Keyword research is about identifying strategic words and phrases that we can integrate into our site's content to satisfy our users' needs and help search engines index our site. So if you remember from earlier, the way a search engine indexes our site to determine relevance is through signals from things like keywords. So keyword research is going to help us answer what people are searching for, how many people are searching for it, and what format they want the information in. And to begin with keyword research, it's important to make sure we understand our users, what they want, and what their goals are. So we want to focus on their needs, goals, how they are searching for information, and even where they're located. And a lot of this information is going to come from user research. And if you're unfamiliar with these kind of topics, I'd recommend checking out our Understanding Your Users workshop, where we talk about different methods for better understanding your users and their needs through methods like user interviews and user personas. Having that base understanding of your users is going to help you in the research process and help you answer those three questions. Now let's zoom into those three questions from earlier. The first one was what people are searching for. So here's where we are going to be identifying the actual keywords and phrases that we can use that people might be using in their search queries. You might find that you already have some keywords in mind that you can start with. You can get these keywords from looking at your content already on your site and thinking about what it is your department offers to its users. Think about the different services you offer, like the different programs you have, as well as any informational resources you offer and identify keywords from there. You should also refer back to how your audience might be searching for information. Think about what their goals and needs are and the kind of questions they might be asking in order to satisfy those needs and accomplish their goals. Once you have a base list of keywords from exploring your website and department and thinking about your users, you can then determine variations of those keywords to add variety to your list. You can do this by using keyword research tools, but you can also use Google. You can use the autocomplete function on Google by entering a keyword or phrase and looking at the autocomplete options Google offers to find variations of the search. You can also look at the related searches on the bottom of the search engine results page. Once you've developed your list of keywords, the next question we want to answer is, how many people are searching for each keyword or phrase? And then you want to prioritize which keywords you want to focus on. When thinking about search volume, Typically, the higher the search volume, the more competitive the keyword will be. We recommend staying away from higher search volume words because of high competition, but also because the search intent for those keywords can be a little bit vague at times. For example, the keyword pizza will likely have a really high search volume, but the intent of the search is unclear. Is the user looking for pizza recipes, a pizza delivery place, or nutritional information on pizzas? For this reason, we suggest prioritizing long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are going to be less competitive because the search volume will be lower and they'll also have a clearer search intent. So instead of the keyword pizza, a long tail keyword could be something like pizza delivery places near me. You can see that this keyword is longer, will have lower search volume, and it will have a clear search intent. So it's important to be strategic in which keywords you want to focus on and use keyword research tools to help us determine search volume. Once you have your list of keywords to prioritize, now it's time to think about the format users want their information in. The format users are looking for their information in is going to help us determine the best way to present the information on our website and how we can successfully and naturally integrate these keywords into our content. One way to determine popular formats is to look at Google's featured snippets. So this is the content that Google will put on the top of the search engine results page. For some searches, it can be content in a video format, in paragraphs, or lists. Looking at this featured snippet will help you determine in what format you should be producing content for that particular search query. Understanding the intent of a search can also help you decide how to format your content. And there's four major categories of intent. The first is informational. This is when people are looking for information on a certain topic. This could be like an application deadline. Navigational is when people are looking to navigate to a certain page, like the Georgetown University Facebook page. Transactional is going to be when a transaction occurs, such as a purchase on a product. And commercial is typically when users want to compare information on different products. 
So it's important to familiarize ourselves with these different forms of intent so we can identify the best way to present the information in a digestible format. Now let's move on to link building. So once you've fine-tuned your content and incorporated your keywords according to what your users are searching for, it's time to focus on building site authority, and this has to do with link building. So first, let's go over the different types of links. There's inbound or backlinks, which are created when one site links to your site, and these are important for building authority. You can think of backlinks as recommendations from other websites. So just like how a friend or a coworker might recommend a product to you, and that recommendation will then build your trust in that product, the same goes for websites linking to other websites. External links are any link that is going to be pointing to an external domain, so something outside of its site. So if site A has an external link to your site, that is going to turn into a backlink for you. Internal links are going to be links that go to another page on your site. These are important for indicating page importance. For example, if you have multiple pages on your site linking to a research page, search engines are gonna assume that that page is important since you've linked to it multiple times. Anchor links also fall under internal links and can be helpful in letting search engines know what content is on the page and in breaking it down even further. I'm sure we've all heard the saying we are what we eat. And in SEO, eat stands for expert, authoritative, and trustworthy. And these are the types of links we want to build in order to have a healthy link profile and to build authority for our site. When building a healthy link profile, here are some things to consider. You wanna make sure that your links are earned or editorially placed. And the best way to get earned links is to produce high quality content. When you have high quality content, other sites will naturally want to link to yours. Another tip is to make sure the links you are receiving are relevant to the content you're producing. This is important so that when users are directed to your site, they find your information helpful and relevant, which can also lead to better conversions on your site. When thinking about internal links, specifically anchor links, you wanna make sure the anchor text is descriptive and relevant to the section you're linking to. So instead of using anchor text like anchor one, use anchor text that is intuitive and descriptive, similar to how you would write good link text. Another tip is to make sure your links are sending qualified traffic. And this relates to making sure your links are from relevant sites. If you're building links from relevant sites with similar topics, then you should be getting quality traffic. An important thing to keep in mind is to avoid low quality or spammy links. Getting links from sites that are not expert, authoritative, or trustworthy can actually harm your rankings on search engine result pages. So keep that in mind when asking other sites for referrals. It's best to stick to each sites that are relevant to your content you're producing. So we know how important backlinks are for building authority, but how do we actually get high quality backlinks? Well, one way you can do this is to connect with relevant brands you've partnered with and ask for referrals. It's common to send emails to web editors for different companies or brands and ask for a referral link. Just make sure the content they're producing is similar to yours so there isn't a disconnect when users are visiting your site. You can send them an email letting them know you have a page or two you think could be helpful to the users and ask for the referral link that way. Another way is to publish a blog. You can use the post feature on WordPress to replicate a blog for your site. You can create posts and then add a blog category for the posts and display them by using the news by category or tag block. Having a blog opens up a lot of opportunities for backlinks. You can have guest writers on your blog who can then invite you to write on theirs. Building these relationships will help you naturally build your backlinks. Another great way to create backlinks is by creating unique resources and resource pages. And this is definitely easier said than done, but when you have unique content, other websites will naturally want to share that information. Another way is to get involved in your community. You can hold virtual events over Zoom and connect with your community and build genuine relationships that organically will lead to backlinks. You can also refurbish top performing content on your site. When you've updated this top performing content, you can then send emails reaching out to similar sites, letting them know you have a great piece of content you just updated that you think it could be helpful to their users. Being newsworthy and producing newsworthy content is another great way to get linked to. The last tip is to be personal and genuine when asking for backlinks and building relationships. You wanna avoid being scammed with requests to hundreds of websites and stick to relevant authoritative sites that will lead to a mutually beneficial relationship. You can also reach out to other relevant Georgetown sites to get started building backlinks. 
So now we know how to build backlinks, but how do we know how many we need? Well, here's one way to estimate how many backlinks you'll need on your site in order to rank within the top results for a certain topic. The first step is to choose a broad topic you want to be known for. Then you'll plug that topic into Google using an incognito window and hit search. Once you've loaded that search engine results page, you'll want to run the URLs for the first 10 results on the search engine results page using a link checking tool. This will give you the number of linking domains for each URL. Once you have the numbers for all 10 sites, I want to calculate the average number of linking domains by adding them all up and dividing by 10. The number you get will give you an estimate as to how many backlinks you'll need on your site in order to compete amongst these top 10 results. Now let's go over measuring, prioritizing, and executing an SEO plan. We all know by now how important it is to set goals for anything that we do. When setting your SEO goals, refer back to your website and department goals and determine what would be most beneficial to help you achieve them. You want to make sure that the goals you're setting are SMART goals, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Actionable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. And I won't go into too much detail about goals today, but if you want to learn more, you can check out our previous content strategy workshops. But for now, let's talk about metrics. So our goals have to be measurable, but what kind of things can we use to measure SEO? Well, one thing you can track is engagement metrics. So this is going to be things like conversion rates, time spent on a page, your bounce rate, either for your site or for a particular page, and also pages per visit. You can also track your search traffic. Through tools like Google Analytics, you can isolate your organic traffic, view traffic to your site over a period of time to see how your SEO has helped, and view your click-through rate. You should also pay attention to your domain and page authority, keyword rankings, and the number of backlinks on your site. You can view this information through different SEO tools, which I'll go over a little bit later. Now, let's get into the activity. For this activity, let's calculate the number of backlinks we'll need to rank high for a certain topic on a search engine's result page. To do this, we can use link checker tools like Moz's Link Explorer tool. For this activity, we can use the backlinks activity template to record our information. Since this is a template, you'll need to make a copy. To do this, go to File and then Make a Copy. Once you've made your copy, we can then start filling out the information. The first step is going to be to choose a broad topic we want to be known for. Then we're going to plug this topic into Google using an incognito window and conduct a search. For this example, I'm going to conduct a search for garden tools. Once I conduct my search, I'm going to scroll down to the first organic results. The first one is going to be this one from Home Depot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the URL and then go into my Link Explorer tool. If this is the first time I'm using this, I'll have to create an account first. So I'll paste my URL here, and then I'll click Get Free Link Data. This is going to prompt you to create an account. Once you've created the account, the results page is going to look something like this. You're going to see over here, linking domains and a number. This is the number you want to make note of. So for this site, it's 83. I'm gonna go back over to my template and make note of this. So for the first organic results, there was 83 linking domains to this website. And I'll just paste my URL here. Once you've determined the number of linking domains for the next four sites, you can then just calculate the average and make note of that here. The average is going to give you an estimate number of how many backlinks you'll need in order to compete with top ranking sites for that particular phrase. Now that we've completed the activity, let's get into the review. We talked about how SEO is about increasing both the quantity and quality of our traffic through organic search engine results. And we also talked about why it's important to invest in optimizing our sites for search engines, as organic results are often viewed as more credible to users than something like a paid ad. We also talked about the importance of conducting keyword research to understand the what and how people search and the format they want the information in, as well as making sure we integrate keywords into our content in a natural way. We talked about the importance of link building to build site authority and to increase our rankings, and also about setting SMART goals. Now, let's go over some great resources and tools that we can use. Google Search Console is great for measuring a site's search traffic and performance. 
Google Analytics is great for tracking and reporting website traffic. If you're unfamiliar with Google Analytics or other Google platforms, I'd recommend checking out Google's free beginner courses and resources they have. When thinking about tools for keyword research and link checking, Ahrefs, SEMrush, and Moz are great tools you can use. They all offer similar tools that have great free versions to try out. They also have some awesome articles about SEO and digital marketing if you're looking for more information on a particular topic. With that being said, this concludes the SEO workshop. If you have any questions about any of the content that was covered, feel free to email us at webservices at georgetown.edu. We hope you enjoyed learning about SEO and thanks for listening.